Uh, we have one more executive director with us, uh, George M. Jacob, who actually looks after the marketing and also the legal side of uh, Mutuj. He is also here. So, to start with, thank you. Good day to all of you. I am sure you all have the group assets, uh, uh, the presentations with you. Uh, the total loan assets under management uh, for the Mutuj group uh, plus subsidiaries have gone up to 30,712, uh, definitely having crossed the 30,000 mark is a landmark for the group and uh, on a year-on-year -year growth it is 10% uh, growth. The subsidiaries today contribute 8% of the total portfolio and uh, we expect this to be contributing 10% by the end of the year and 15% uh, by the end of the next year. <coughs> The, uh, the profit, the standalone profits, the uh, income of the uh, for the uh, for the quarter is uh, uh, standalone income for the uh, quarter quarter is 1,567 crores, and profit before tax 720, and the profits after tax 464. The loan assets uh, in Mutut Finance books is 28,265. And we continue with the same, almost the same number of branches, 4,303 branches. Uh, we have also uh, suggested, or the, the board has approved a dividend of uh, rupees 10 per share, which is 100% uh, dividend, uh, versus 60% uh, 6 per, 6 or 6 rupees per share, which we had hitherto been given. Uh, that is mainly uh, because the company has done better than the previous year and the total profit for the quarter, uh, up to this quarter is uh, 1,269 which is certainly higher, we have already uh, crossed the last year's full year's profit of 1,180 so rewarding the shareholders with a uh, little more dividends uh, certainly looked appropriate <coughs> on this part, that is why the board took that decision. The, the average return on loan assets, uh, loan assets is 6.64 uh, and the uh, return on equity is 24.54%. Uh, uh, the subsidiaries have also done well. Uh, the, home, the home loan subsidiary uh, has also crossed the 1000 crore mark. It is at 1100 and uh, doing well. And is uh, as a little uh, a tad better than the uh, targets which he had set for this year. Uh, going forward, they should uh, reach, as we had said, about uh, 1,400 plus end of the year. Uh, and uh, last year we had set uh, uh, doubling it uh, next year and reaching 5,000 this five years time. The uh, Bellstar uh, Finance is also done well. They have also reached 945 crores of uh, AUM and uh, uh, definitely their PAR is also uh, very reasonable compared, compared to many other companies and uh, we definitely uh, keep a close watch on that company. They are doing well. Uh, they are also in the process of uh, increase, raising their uh, capital. Mutu will also contribute. They are trying, uh, trying to get uh, external investors also in that company. The Mutut insurance brokers definitely has done well. The, the first year premium collection uh, is uh, on Q3 is uh, 44 crores, uh, uh, for, which was 44 crores last year has reached 59 crores and the decent profit uh, also is there in the subsidiary. The Sri Lankan subsidiary has not done that well because the overall economy of Sri Lanka is not doing well and also politically they are not as stable as they were, they are not as very stable in the last one year, one and a half years. So there is a uh, economic uh, vacuum, uh, not vacuum, this paralysis there and things are not moving well. But nevertheless, uh, they will do better than last year. They had expected a 50% uh, growth in book which may uh, uh, end up with only about 20%. Still, the, uh, the book is decent, the quality of assets are also decent and they will make a better profit than last year. Of course, the, the 
Uh, exposure of Muthuth is very little there, it's about uh, 40 crores only. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, we are definitely in the process of uh, doing much more things and uh, we would like to say two things here which <coughs> we would like to tell the investors. In the last two quarters, we have actually strengthened our interest collection team, especially in the harder buckets, <coughs> wherein we scheduled customer visits and also provided schemes that incentivize customers to renew and close their loans. We are actually giving a 5% cash back of the interest paid to customers who renew their loan, uh, which is more than 12 months old loan. If they are renewed, we gave a 5% cash back, which is a big success because we got a lot of loans renewed because of this. This is evidenced again by the uh, uh, limited auctions that took place last quarter. Last quarter, the auctions were only 269 crores, whereas in the previous quarter, it was 718 crores. The renewal of loans help our customers to retain their gold jewelry, help us retain the customer, and also help the company to realize full interest that was accrued. accrued. Whereas if we uh, in the past, auction realization jewelry as scrap gold resulted in lower interest realization. Although the principle in all these cases were fully realized. By providing our customers with additional time from the contracted period of 12 months, we are able to fully realize the interest on the loan. The consequence of this policy is that the company needs to provide a longer time for the customer to regularize the account through a renewal or close the account. As a result, the company is required to show a higher level of NP. Of course, as you are all aware, as analysts, you are all aware that NP is purely technical and does not lead to any potential loss. And this NP is fully secured and fully principle protected. Uh, probably you can say in the money. The NPA that is classified as NPA is only due to regulatory requirements, which is but which the requirements are actually designed uniformly for all classes of assets of NBFCs, irrespective of the quality of the underlying security. Gold loans, as you know, are flexible products and to meet a wide range of your cash flow requirements. If you study the unorganized market, the gold loan is considered as a standard asset as long as the interest is serviced and it is in the money. The customers prefer this flexibility and is one of the unique benefits of this gold. But one main advantage of having taken this renewal and closure policy versus an auction policy was that we were able to realize much more interest and that is certainly one of the reasons why the interest collections have gone up and the profit has also improved. Of course, the cost of borrowing had also come down in the last year, that is also one of the reasons. But a great, uh, a great contributor was certainly these renewal and closure of loans by the customers uh, instead of an auction. So we will continue to do this, uh, uh, this, pol this policy of renewal and closure uh, and do more strength and uh, maybe put more people also to go and reach out to customers, which in the last two quarters we have seen good results. We will continue to keep this forward. If, that, if we are able to follow that, Certainly, I think our, uh, we will be able to maintain the good profitability of the company also. The only cost of this policy is that uh, rather uh, the company has to keep explaining this to the media and the analysts. Otherwise, it's win-win for the customer, win-win for the company also. So, that's one of the things. Then, one more <coughs> initiative which we have taken and that is why uh, our uh, executive director, Mr. George M. Jacob, is, or George M. Jacob is also here, is that we have actually engaged with Amitabh Bachchan as the Muthut's brand ambassador. He will be representing Muthut across the country. Since we need an all India, uh, all India brand ambassador, we chose Amitabh Bachchan over many others who has, who we, we feel will give a good boost to the uh, group and the company. Along with this, we have also become the principal team partner, principal team partner of Chennai Super Kings in the IPL. Muthur Group is the principal team partner for the uh, Chennai Super Kings and uh, the IPL season which is starting in April and uh, we will be there for next three years and uh, I am sure this will certainly help 
all round development as uh, chennai super kings is also considered one of the most popular teams and ipl is considered as one of the most popular sport in kerala uh, for, uh, by the media so i am sure we will get good media coverage and also there is a lot of rub off on the marketing side these things we feel should help the company to grow the market to grow the business also uh, probably if uh, there are no surprises coming in the next uh, one one year we should see something like a 15% plus growth in the aum uh, both in the gold loan company as well as in the subsidiary certainly should be much more so uh, on that note i think i leave it to the uh, leave it to the listeners for their comments and questions thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one on your touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Muthi Pana. We like the first question from the line of Shiva Kumar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, congrats for a great set of numbers, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just a couple of questions from my side. Uh, so, first of all, uh, what is the percentage of AVM uh, uh, with respect to that uh, 10 lakh plus uh, business loan which you had launched? how is it faring uh, actually we are the 10 lakh plus aum to my knowledge is about 500 crores and how is, how has it moved sir over the quarter so uh, we started uh, the quarter with almost zero and uh, now we have reached 500 crores uh, we would uh, like to maybe uh, do a little tweaking to that also it's in the in, we are considering giving a little tweaking to that probably trying to uh, make it little more attractive to the customer by bringing down the percent, uh, the uh, loan value etc we are considering it only so uh, people have actually started using it right sir and uh, while uh, in the beginning you have explained how you have beefed up the collection uh, team which is leading to this uh, kind of uh, spurt in the uh, uh, nim so uh, can we assume that the gnp ratio will stay at levels because we were given to understand that it's because of the six months loan that it's spiked up and might come down when the six months uh, aum is kind of run down but now you're saying that uh, it's uh, it's going to be stay at these levels and uh, it is due to this collection effort that uh, it's gone up no 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 uh, i think uh, uh, going forward this should come down it uh, definitely it should come down also because the six month loan gets uh, uh, Get, get out of the book uh, in the next uh, couple of months etc so i am sure uh, we will be able to uh, reduce that but again uh, by reducing that uh, if it is through auctions you are reducing it the company is going to be a loss so we will right. rather give little more time to the customer so what i am trying to say is that we need not get upset about the npa numbers that's it. that's the only message i want to say any any guidance sir as to at what levels uh, npa would be at uh, march given that the most of the six months loan would be out of the book see uh, you know uh, this quarter uh, you know the remaining uh, six months loans will become uh, uh, you know uh, matured or becomes due so it's up to uh, you know we are at to uh, take a full view as to the liquidation of all these uh, loans the objective is to bring down the auction so you know probably the npa numbers will remain at a similar level uh, uh, going at the current run rate at the end of the day we look at whether the company is benefited or not you know uh, as uh, md said uh, you know these are all technical npas you know and it should be a win win situation for both customer as well as the company just because there is a regulatory requirement we may not be uh, fully right in uh, auctioning of all these loan accounts you know in cases Uh, you know and a lot of these loan accounts uh, you know the customers might be paying interest on a monthly basis and it is also not prudent just because he has not come to the branch for a renewal or a closure you know it is not uh, right to uh, uh, you know do an auction and you know we are going you know going to frighten uh, the uh, customers 
if we uh, go for an auction uh, you know when he is regular in his payment so you know probably the npa numbers will remain at a similar level uh, we are trying our uh, you know best to you know call up the customers and uh, clear the dues or you know getting it uh, renewed uh even otherwise also you know though the percentage is slightly higher uh, we are not expecting any losses because of uh, because of this honest sir so can you quantify how much of the 1590 crores is from the 6 months uh, aum 6 months of the gnp about, about 500 crores okay so 500 crores uh, of gnp is flowing from the 6 months loan category right yes. i can say that okay sir. thank you sir thank you <coughs> The next question is on the line of Ashish Kumar from Infinity Alternatives. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, and congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, I'll just pick up from the previous uh, person's question in terms of the delay on the NPS. So, how long are you planning to give the customer uh, before you are actually going to auction? So, so I know that you are giving him more time, but. but let's say if you earlier used to give him 3 months are you are you now looking to give him 6 months 9 months what is the outer line by when you would actually start kind of closing it out uh, depends on uh, on customers where the where they are able to meet up with the customers ask him and uh, some places the customer himself says uh, i it may not be possible for me to uh, release or renew the gold in that case we just auction it but if we still ask him for time and the people on the on the uh on on the field our people feel that uh, there is there, it is wiser to give him more time we take a call on that so it is not a time bound thing it is actually the uh, customers uh, relationship and customers uh, what uh, need or where we are convinced that the customer will come back we give him more time if we are also convinced customer is not coming back then we just auction it see you should also remember maybe 3 years 4 years back we had 3000 and 3500 crores of auction but now we have actually brought it down it's not actually good to auction all these gold it doesn't do well for that do good for the industry as well as for the perception of the people so if people feel that so many auctions are happening then they may not even come forward for this so we should see how the customer is also uh, maybe feels happy and uh, feels good to come back again for a loan just because of this the solution is just auction it if i auction it then there will be no questions on this every everything we just auction and npa will be zero but that will not be profitable for the company and profitable for the long term business that's why we are taking this decision see we have been in this business for decades i think uh, some of these things you should leave it to us so sir i agree with you that um, that uh, you've been for decades and that's why we are investors but uh, i think the concern which is there is that in case there is a, and the and the cap and the markets are very volatile in case there is a sudden drop in gold price correct then the then today we are there any internal thresholds in terms of what kind of uh, loan to value we are keeping even when we are extending it because if in case there is a sudden drop in the gold price the the ability to auction in a quick period of time because of the notices and the advertisements whatever is required from a regulatory perspective we may actually end up taking a loss when we are trying to maximize the revenues for the company i think that's where the concern is honestly coming from so i just wanted to understand a little bit around that see the question of the gold price coming down is there the question of gold gold price going up is also there so right. we should not take a very short term view if you see a bump in the gold price we should not uh, we should uh, we we should not be uh auctioning just because the price of gold has come down probably as you yourself say it is fluctuating the fluctuating both ways fluctuating means it should come down and should go up also so i think those are decisions which we would take and uh, why do you think we would take a decision which is not in the interest of the company so no, obviously you have been as i said you have been managing it for decades and uh, we trust you as investors so so but the idea is to kind of get a little bit more understanding around so the second thing moving on a slightly different track uh, if i see our this quarter because the good profits that the company has had and uh, our capital our uh, capital adequacy is already at 23 24% uh, just the tier one and thank you again for a nice increase in dividend 
but uh, given where we are should we uh, do we should we be expecting a higher payout ratio going forward given the fact that our ROAs and ROEs are significantly higher than our growth rate so should we be ex looking at a higher dividend payout ratio going forward or 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 or, 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 or any other mechanism to return capital given the fact that we are running significantly ahead of our uh, of the regulatory requirements our historical uh, track record on capital side so we have not we have uh, doesn't mean that we have lost uh, hope of uh, increasing the aum in gold loan etc gold loan continues to be our focus as i'm sure gold loan should grow i think i you heard about the marketing initiatives etc we are also taking so we have lot of confidence that gold loan aum should grow and along with that we are also looking at the home finance company also which can also grow so it can also take up more capital of the company so returning capital or maybe doing uh, any such thing has never crossed our mind we are certainly hopeful and confident that uh, we will be able to use up this capital more wisely in the company sure sir so, no sir my comment was coming from the fact that now we are kind of at a 23 24% roe and if i heard you correctly i think next year we are looking at a 13 14% growth in aum which basically means that our profitability is 10 uh, or 40 45% of our profits is excess profits in the company and already we have a reasonably large uh, pool of capital so so that's where i was coming from so we have not taken a decision to return capital etc what capital is there or an increase in the payout ratio going forward oh, that's what what about it's also yeah. both amounts to the and amounts to the same thing absolutely in the existing capital is generating i think a good decent return also right uh it but it can be significantly higher if you can improve our leverage so in our ROAs have been very robust at 6% is it because our ROAs are good that we have to, we have all these problems <laughs> no, i anyway i'll leave it to you guys as uh, as yeah, this is something access to kind of take us forward always uh, come uh, no the subject uh, always comes before us you uh, know yeah. so you know we are uh, trying to use this capital within the company and you uh, know the reason why bold has increased the payout is you uh, know uh, the fact that you no know, company has done well and a part of this you uh, know should be returned to the shareholders so you know that is almost like you uh, know 75% uh, increase in the payout yeah from 6 okay. rupees we are increasing to uh, 10 rupees yeah but in terms of the percentage of the net profit if i look at it slightly differently we are still at 20 25% of the net profits okay okay yeah. a point taken yeah okay thanks a lot and i wish you all the best going forward thank you The next question is in the line of Vaibhav Barjatia from HNI Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for providing the opportunity and congratulations for the great set of numbers. I uh, just uh, wanted to understand a bit more on the uh, six-month uh, uh, six-month loan scheme. So, uh, why why there is a there is a problem of NPA on six-month scheme because if a customer uh, is anyway paying interest. Uh, on a regular basis and after 6 months if he comes uh, uh, comes to us for renewal we can anyway renew his loan right for another 6 months so i am i'm just not able to understand why 12 months uh, loan does not have this problem and 6 months loan has this problem so uh, so uh, you know even if he is paying interest on a monthly basis 6 months loan becomes overdue at the end of 6 months now uh, no either he has to close the loan at the end of 6 uh, 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 you know before 9 uh, 10 months or he has to renew the uh, loan at the current ltv so he has to come to the branch for doing this so be persuade mm. the customer to come to the branch for a renewal because he has to because it's a uh, you know physical uh, uh, collateral is there he has to come to the branch for renewal some you know some of these customers uh, no but doesn't turn up at the branch for that kind of an exercise so and for, uh, unfortunately we have to classify these loans because he is not coming to the branch he has to come to the branch not, to renew it and also pay up the difference in uh, ltv if there is okay got it so uh, i mean coming to the branch would be an issue for 6 months and 12 months on both right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, i think it has to do more with uh, the ltv and probably um, uh, the need for partial repayment right 
So more than the LTV, uh, no, it's more of the, uh, no, probably the customer is not finding enough time to come to the branch for, uh, uh, no, uh, doing this renewal exercise. So mm -hmm. uh, he has to come to the branch, uh, <coughs> sign the document. So that takes uh, some time. So probably because of, uh, he knows that he has given a val uh, no, valuable security. So, you uh, know, he may not feel that, no, he has to come to the branch at that point of time to do this exercise. And uh, mm. at that point of time, a person who, who is a 12 months loan, who has always paid 10 months interest, if you just take an mm. option, it's because he has not come to the branch. This is very, very unfair and we'll have a big fight to the customer. Mm. No, I'm also against auctioning the gold. That's, that's how the point I was trying to make. I was just trying to understand what's the difference between 6 months and 12 months from a customer's point of view. Uh, oh. That's probably, I think I got the answer. And the second... Hmm. Scheme becomes NPI at the end of 16 months, so that's the difference. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right. Well, on the on our new scheme of providing more than 10 lakh rupees, uh, 10 lakh rupees loan. So, uh, how so are the are the people involved in in selling this product uh, are, are different than the people who sell our other products, uh, or or they overlap? Yeah, it is, same, it is the same set of people who have, who have to sell. Uh, you must also realize that a 10 lakh loan means he has to bring one, one loan of 10 lakhs, with a 10 mm. lakhs or maybe 15 lakhs worth of gold. Not very easy, sir. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have so many people who have gold and also want to take a loan. There will be a lot of people mm. who have 15 lakhs worth of jewelry, but probably he doesn't want a loan. So both should hmm. be, both should act together. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That is still like a loan, and also a need for taking a gold loan. Fair enough. Uh, got it. I just, uh, I'm just, I was just. Please, that's all. Yeah, I was just thinking from a sales uh, person point of view. So if I'm given two options to, uh, to kind of have, uh, get one loan of ten lakhs or above, or get probably ten. Uh, you know, 30 loans of uh, 30,000 rupees each. I would, I would definitely try to do more of the let, uh, more of the, uh, more of the large ticket loans. And uh, that's where my worry was that uh, how do you differentiate incentivizing sales people when the same person is uh, doing both the jobs? The 12% is at a lower rate of interest. The yield is low, so his incentives also will be lower. <laughs> okay, so the incentives are linked to the yield, is it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, Not okay. Though, but it is linked to the incentive. In the hmm. Hmm. Okay, uh, got it. Thanks, thank you, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Anand Bhavnani from Samaksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My first question is about the. Uh, uh, cashback scheme that you mentioned in your opening remarks. If you can elaborate on how many accounts have taken benefit of this scheme and the total AUM under these accounts and help us understand how long are you planning to carry forward this scheme? No, it is, a, it is just a marketing scheme and we have done it and a lot of people have uh, benefited from, a uh, lot of people have used this scheme and company has definitely benefited by getting the, all these accounts renewed. I think it's a good marketing technique. I don't have any numbers for how many people have come, etc. Okay. So, uh, the numbers actually are reflected in the interest collection. Okay. So, uh, this uh, cashback scheme, is it uh, a new kind of marketing scheme that we have done? Or we have done yeah, it's a unique one. We just started, uh, we were the first ones to start it and I think it was a good one. Okay. And, uh, sir, uh, provisioning wise, we are still, I just want to double check, we are still at 120 days DPD, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And so, uh, can you give us some guidance on how much uh, uh, GNP do you anticipate to increase once we shift at the end of Q4? Uh, no, we, we told you we may end up with the same, same numbers. Oh. Yeah, so, I uh, know, uh, 90 days incremental could be maybe another 500, 600 crores. Okay. Uh, for five, five to six hundred crores. Yes. Okay. Fine, sir. I'll come back and give you for additional questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parag Zariwala from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead. 
uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, three straight question. One is that you know in earlier call, uh, I think you have highlighted that uh, uh, more than one million uh, loans, which are generally uh, at between 14 to 16 odd percent, was five percent of the book. But just now you, I think to reply to some of the question, you said it is only 500 crores. So where is the uh, difference? Secondly, uh, uh, can you just tell me what is the interest accrued number for this quarter? And lastly, sir, uh, you know, more uh, kind of a strategic kind of a thing, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of our competition as well as if you look at even Muthut FinCorp and all, they have started uh, doing some, uh, you know, other products as well, like two, two wheelers and etc. So, uh, I'm with you, sir, that in, in a longer term, we have to stick to what we are specialized in. Uh, and shouldn't you know get saved by the uh, short term uh, trends and all those stuff but is there any scope uh, to utilize the uh, uh, you know the infrastructure we have about four or four or thousand branches to do some other business maybe on a pilot basis and then scale it up yeah okay okay i'll take it i'll take that one first yes uh, we are always on the lookout for good opportunities there as and when, when, as and when the uh, board and the management is comfortable, we can think of other loans, as you said, like two-wheeler or four-wheeler, etc. We can certainly think about that. That is always at the back of our mind, not the front of our mind, not back of our mind. Always uh, uh, we are thinking about that. It's always there. And the second the second point about this 5% uh, of our portfolio. See, those are the existing portfolio. This I said is the new portfolio which has come in the new scheme. The new okay. scheme. Is, okay. Uh, new scheme. The existing portfolio, which uh, probably it would have run down a little bit. <coughs> it should be there. Always existing is there. Sure. And uh, the subscription is 1024 crores. 1024. Uh, for the quarter. Not for the quarter, as of, as of the quarter, as of the quarter. Okay, 1024. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Abhishek Ram from Halcon UK Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on a good set of numbers. I just wanted to understand in terms of NIM, so this quarter is about 15 odd percent, nine months is 14.5 uh, percent. Going forward in the next two years, where do you see the NIM, uh, sustainable level of NIM? That's my first question. Okay, your second question also I'll answer together. Sure, uh, my second question is, you know, I just wanted an example. On 1st January, say you give a loan of 100 rupees, and on December 31st, it's, it's accrued to 120 rupees. The, and when you say renewal, uh, your customer uh, retention team has been working on a renewal. Do you make them pay the interest and then you renew the loan at a different LTV? Or is it then the interest also uh, is, 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 is renewed? Uh, so basically, the interest is not paid and just the LTV is uh, 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 swapped out. Okay, I'll answer the first question first. What the first question was... Um, uh, NIM, I think uh, uh, a NIM of 12%, around this 12% plus or minus 1 would be what we would be thinking of or what we think should be sustainable going forward. 12% or plus or minus 1%. Okay, as far as the other one is concerned, the customer has to pay the full interest up to that date. He has to pay it. And if there is an LTV difference, he has to pay that also. Only then it can be renewed at the, because all renewals or new loans can happen only at the percent LTV. Right, and and the and the five percent cashback that you mentioned is on the interest that is uh, paid by the customer. He gives a five percent rebate, so he's incentivized to pay it and renew it. Correct, correct. If you renew it, we give him five percent. If the interest works two hundred rupees, we pay him five percent of two hundred ten rupees. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Dhauli from Travantage Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just bringing you back to the previous or the main, uh, you know, the topic. Uh, on your DNPAs, uh, I just wanted to understand a couple of things. Uh, so, uh, 
over the last two quarters we've seen gnps you know rise consistently and way above your normal run rate so uh, is there a certain limit internally set limit where you have decided that this is the level that you're targeting when you are you know, allowing your borrowers to uh, more lenient uh, uh, repayment schedule that is one and uh, second uh, has apart from your own policy has there uh, has the underlying economy changed in some aspect which is actually forcing you to have a much more lenient structure in place that was my second question okay the dnp dnp actually everybody you said that is the main question that is actually very is not the main aspect of this business at all so dnp is never a loss for the company has never been a loss for the company and uh, we should not be over over uh, uh, over co not over cautious or concerned about this that's the first thing i would like to add uh, th add to this your point about this dnpa so we need not get over uh, over concerned about this the second point was about uh, uh, any external factors no actually it is makes good business sense only the uh, auctioning all these gold we are actually antagonizing customers and every and also uh, today uh, in the last 3 months after the gst uh, there is a 3% uh, gst you have to pay on the principal and the interest when it is auctioned mm -hmm. so if you auction a, a loan of 2000 rupees uh, you have to pay 3% on the 2000 plus 3% on the interest on the interest component of that also on what you get after the sale so that's also a big loss for the customer and also for the company so it makes does not make sense to auction at all so we should be try to reduce uh, other than this there is no external factor etc which has after uh, which has uh, forced us to take uh, non auction it's just pure business sense pure pure business sense okay but uh, just coming back uh, is there any limit that you have that say uh, gnp of say 7 8% that you comfortable with or maybe say a 10% just wanted <laughs> to understand that see if the gold etc is good and the customer has is okay and please also understand that uh, the gnp does not mean that all these persons have, have to pay all the 13 or 14 months interest you will have paid 5 uh, months interest and 6 months interest is already just not come to Uh, give the balance interest and the difference in ltv if it is there that is all the problem here sir this is a not a loss asset at all but uh, sir uh, uh, is this all is not paid 1 rupee interest there will be more than 75% would have paid some part of the interest at some part of time so he he if he has paid interest means he wants the gold he is concerned about the gold right. so selling it and just antagonizing him and giving uh, losing a customer is definitely not good but sir uh, on uh, on the other hand uh, do you also uh, you know are you also not uh, risking the borrower to uh, or maybe inculcating some kind of a moral hazard in the borrower if you are uh, you know uh, uh, giving him a much more lenient structure for repayment because if he at the back of his mind knows that uh, the company would take uh, you know some more time to liquidate the gold he would uh, you know uh, may not be uh, very eager or may not be uh, uh, concerned about the payment as much as he should be otherwise see a gold loan customer if somebody takes a gold loan it is not an emi loan at all if it is an emi loan he will go and take a personal loan or he will take a vehicle loan or he will take a on emi is there see because he is getting a relaxed payment structure a relaxed uh, repayment structure is one of the reasons people take a gold loan we should we should understand his psychology also whenever he, he gets that money he has got some money he paid so uh, forcing him to pay it and uh, maybe too much if we force he will just uh, somehow take back the gold and he will not come back to so this is a business this is showing right right thank you so much for this insights thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Shiva Kumar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the follow-up opportunity, sir. Uh, what is the average tenor of the loans uh, which uh, you have seen over the last uh, nine months? See, even though you extend it for the one year, and I believe there are no prepayment charges, uh, what is the average tenor of the customers' loans? Uh, um, average tenor will be three to six months. There is not much of a change because we have a very huge uh, rotation. The uh, no. in the lower buckets 
right so and uh, coming to the uh, return on assets which has spiked around 6% uh, now that you have said that you would stick to this collection mechanism when you would allow the customers themselves to repay and uh, reclaim their uh, gold assets uh, uh, should one expect this ROAs to be uh, uh, to be uh, on a sustained basis i mean uh, to be made uh, roa we have always guided the uh, investors about 3 uh, and a half percentage so currently we are uh, the uh, no the return is about 6 and a half uh, no we are not assuring uh, for a uh, no medium term or long term so in the short term we are generating this but uh, no for investors we should we should look at around 3 and a half percentage at least in the medium to long term no but for the last two quarters you have been uh, generating more than 6.5 okay the, the cost of borrowing the lower cost of borrowing also had its role to play yes. Yes. but uh, so, if you are saying that this is a yeah if if you are saying that this is a sustained uh, uh, strategy that you would use th- then roa should definitely start trending upwards right so that is also uh, because how uh, we have structured the six month schemes and all how the you know the the additional interest are calculated when it becomes overdue so once uh, we have already stopped the six month scheme so th- those benefits will go away once we you uh, know uh, once this portfolio gets unwound so that extra benefit will come down uh, uh, but uh, in terms of collection uh, um, part uh, we'll continue that access to that extent some benefits will, will uh, come to the company of course uh, on the short run we keep uh, tweaking the interest rate so uh, you know uh, that's why we may not be able to always be able to continue the same uh, return on asset uh, that is all, that is a reason why we uh, say that you know 3 and 1/2% is something which you should consider at, for the medium term all right so and uh, how is the experience in the sme loans which you recently started you said you have reached 500 crores in that segment which is a 12% loan for uh, high ticket sizes of about 10 lakhs so what is the experience uh, there and what is your strategy going forward i i think you understood that it is a sme loan is a gold backed loan yeah understood so it's a go- it's backed by gold yeah it is just at a lower interest rate right the marketing uh, method to bring bigger customers to a customer, to a company who would otherwise have gone to a bank for an od etc so it takes time to market this to customers then probably we have i told you we are around 500 crores of that uh, it takes little more time but of course it's a 12% loan right so uh, and uh, what is the trajectory that you see for your cost of borrowing now it has touched about 8.6 uh, in q3 which was much better than uh, the full year last year and also on uh, uh, 8.71 which we got to see in q2 hey, is I, this is the lowest we are seeing a uh, upward uh, uh, no trends now everyone knows that there is a upward trend and uh, no in uh, cost of borrowing so i uh, know i think further uh, reduction i think will be uh, quite low you no know, probably we may uh, be able to reduce it by maybe another 10 15 basis points but uh, no at the same time uh, no it also depends on how rbi is going to take a policy and there is an indication that rates might go up so in that case uh, no as and when the banks change their mcl there will be an upward movement in uh, cost of borrowing of course then you uh, know those loans which uh, been booked earlier uh, will have a uh, no uh, will give some benefit uh so you know this uh, this rate might continue for some more time but uh, uh, no further reduction drastic reduction um, uh, is unlikely right so uh, just to confirm the auctions were 269 crores sir, this quarter yes now also 718 crores in q2 right 778 778 right so thank you sir and all the best for q2 <coughs> The next question is from the line of Ritika Dua from Alara Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Ritika, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, so just one question. Uh, most have been answered. So what is the uh, total marketing louder, budget? Louder, please. Uh, louder, please. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yeah, louder. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry uh, so i was just asking what is the total uh, marketing budget that we have for uh, next year and how does that obviously compare to this year yeah we will have a decent budget next year we have not decided on it i think i don't want it want to make it public also all right so that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of gokul maheshwari from mozak advisors please go ahead 
Yeah, thank you for taking my question. I just have a question on your branch expansion plans for uh, FY18 and 19. Ah, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Google. I was, I thought you would be asking earlier questions. Why are you so late today? Okay. <laughs> uh, branch expansion. We have a whole, we we try to uh, uh, last two years, etc. We were opening about 150 branches and probably uh, maybe merging or about uh, 50 60 branches also net net additions would have been 50 60 a year this year also we will try the same thing only we will uh, try to open about 150 branches maybe this year is almost over probably in the next 12 months another 150 branches or so is what we are thinking of not a very uh, what should we say mm, very aggressive branch expansion plans maybe good places under 150 as and then the opportunity is there. Right. And uh, on the home loan business, sir, uh, while the gross NPA numbers are quite small, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the business is still building up in terms of AUMs. So, uh, one, uh, what would be the target for the home loan business for uh, your end this year and your FI19? And secondly, um, since uh, it is yet to season, could you also just give uh, your strategy on how you have a collection mechanism for monitoring uh, these home loans uh, so that it doesn't really become an issue later on? Right. Uh, so, hi, Gokul. Um, so, right now, <coughs> our NPAs are at, uh, you know, below 0.43% uh, at the gross level. <coughs> we hope to uh, end the year with uh, a number similar to this or probably lesser. Uh, and uh, we hope to uh, uh, end the year with about 1,400 crores plus of AUM. Uh, with uh, respect to how uh, we are rolling out our strategy for uh, you know keeping the NPAs in check, uh, we have already <clears throat> put in place an effective collection mechanism. Uh, for the first six to nine months, uh, of the company's uh, uh, scale up, uh, we had uh, not had a dedicated collections team because we expected our sales managers itself to, uh, you know, own the responsibility of collections. But uh, now that, uh, you know, we have a fairly large portfolio and a fairly large uh, geographic presence, uh, over the last quarter, uh, we've uh, set up a, a collections mechanism team. Uh, and uh, this is spread across all our regions and uh, they are also incentivized in, uh, uh, in making sure that uh, loans from the uh, harder buckets move to uh, the lower buckets or become standard assets. So we've been uh, cautious about uh, making sure that we have a collections team in place uh, so that, uh, you know, NPAs and delinquencies are kept in check. <coughs> right. Okay, thank you, Ipin, and all the best. So, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Roshan Chutke from ICICI Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so can you give us a breakup of the NIM, the NII, rather? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chutke. So, we are not able to hear you. Can you speak a bit louder? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, can you just give us the breakup of the interest income? Uh, how much of it is penal interest and... Oh, so almost everything is 98% will be uh, interest income. Okay, uh, so so how do I understand this? Uh, it's, I mean, the NIMS have increased... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not call late if you have... If you're answering yeah, it. so uh, no, NIMS have increased primarily because of a better collection mechanism. So we explained it in detail in the initial... Uh, initial uh, you know, when we started the call. So that is primarily because of a better collection. We had a large uh, NPR overdue buckets uh, which uh, came in this quarter. Instead of going for an auction, uh, uh, you know, we actually uh, went out, reached out to the customers collected the interest in full. Uh, when you do an auction, we release a lower amount because of uh, lower the amount of interest. lower amount of interest because uh, no, there is a, always a discount which is given to the gold price. Correct. So instead of doing an auction, instead of uh, uh, doing an auction, we uh, collected the full interest from the customers. So that is the reason why the interest collections are better. 
Okay. And uh, the corresponding the net interest margin. Of course, the cost of borrowing also has come down. Sure. The last one year, uh, you know, interest cost has come down by about 200 basis points. All right. And just one more question. Um, this uh, uh, number of depositors number, right, uh, has uh, decreased. Or any particular reason for this? Huh, NCD, uh, no, uh, uh, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, no, uh, earlier we were having uh, the privately placed uh, debentures uh, which was rolled out through the branches. Now because of the change in uh, RBI regulations, we are no longer doing that private placement. We are now doing only the listed debentures. Uh, you know, in the current uh, year we are not done any, uh, <coughs> done one in April, after that we are not done. So, you know, because of that there is a uh, decrease in the, uh, uh, debenture numbers. So, corresponding the investor numbers are also lower. Okay. Okay. And uh, what is the interest accrued this quarter? Sorry if I'm repeating. 1,024 crores. 1,024 crores. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question.